Unlike labs for chemistry, biology, or physics, much of the labs that you will perform in this class will be performed outdoors. For example, depending on your school's geographic location and access to open spaces, you will likely perform a soil pit lab. In this lab, either you could be asked to dig a soil pit or one would be prepared for you, and the goal of this lab would be for you to understand the relationship between observable and describable soil features and the factors of soil formation and soil forming processes. In this lab, you would use your soil morphology knowledge acquired in lecture to refine your ability to describe major soil characteristics, complete soil profile descriptions, and recognize soil horizons. Using your knowledge of soil profiles and understanding the processes of how soils are developed, you would be able to recognize soil horizons which are the different characteristics in the layers directly above and beneath it. Another key technique in earth science and geology is taking strike and dip measurements. You would take these measurements using a Brunton compass, which is a special instrument used to make accurate degree and angle measurements of rock bedding and is used by geologists, archaeologists, environmental engineers, and surveyors. For starters, the dip is measured to determine the acute angle and the direction that a rock surface makes for the horizontal plane. If you have ever gone on a hike, you have likely observed how layers of rock appear to have been stacked on top of each other. This would be considered a bedding plane and is known as the surface that separates each successive layer of a stratified rock from its preceding layer. Then the strike is the direction of the line formed by the intersection of a rock surface with a horizontal plane. In simpler terms, the strike is always perpendicular to the dip and when determining which direction the strike is running, you would use the right hand rule. Using the right hand rule, you would place your right hand down the direction of the dip and your thumb is pointing in the direction of the strike. Strike and dip measurements are important to geologists because it helps them better understand bedding formation and how the land was shaped and its future movement. This information helps geologists better understand geological processes, helps us find natural resources, and better understand natural hazards such as earthquakes or landslides. Now the two most common concentrations within this major are hydrology and geology. In the hydrology concentration, you will study water's intimate relationship with soil and earth science. You will go way beyond your basic understanding of the hydraulic cycle, and you will learn all the best practices for irrigation, water conservation and management, and dive deeper into soil maps using your knowledge from soil taxonomies. Hydrology applies scientific knowledge and mathematical principles to solve water-related problems in society, problems of quantity, quality, and availability. Hydrology is not only of interest to earth scientists, but also to engineers and other professionals concerned with finding water supplies for cities or irrigated farms, or controlling river flooding or soil erosion. Or they may work in environmental protection, preventing or cleaning up pollution, or locating sites for safe disposal of hazardous wastes. The other concentration is geological sciences. In this concentration, you will spend time identifying major landforms and their major components by interpreting aerial photographs and topographic maps. Map making is a huge field within geology for four key reasons. One is to provide geologic information that can help to reduce death and damage caused by geologic hazards such as earthquakes and landslides. Two is to better find and protect or safely extract geologic resources. Three is to improve our stewardship of the earth through informed agriculture, construction, and environmental practices. And four is to help geologists unravel the geologic history of the region. Whether you are interested in harvesting natural resources or a professional interested in urban planning, Geological maps are an incredibly valuable tool for geologists. One class many geology students enjoy is Fundamentals of Seismology. In this course you will study plate tectonics, which is a theory explaining the structure of the Earth's crust and many associated phenomena as resulting from the interaction of rigid lithospheric plates that move slowly over the underlying mantle. This concentration will give you the extensive knowledge in geology, which is critical in the application of mining and natural resource exploration for natural gas and oil. In fact, many people who major in earth science with a concentration in geology go into the oil and mining industries because it is a lucrative career with both job growth and stability. Although you can find a job with only a bachelor's degree, by obtaining a master's degree you can find more specialized jobs in the geosciences that pay more. Some but not all schools will have students perform a senior project. If your school does have one, many of you will have the opportunity to study under a presiding professor. Many geology research projects are performed for the sake of knowledge and understanding our Earth better. Some research projects could be studying the age of rock formations such as the Sierra Nevadas. 
This might not have a direct practical purpose from a monetary standpoint, but it is useful information so that we can better understand how land masses are formed and better understand earth movements and be more prepared for seismic events like earthquakes. And we can use this to protect our roads and homes from landslides. Aside from going on to graduate school to obtain a master's or PhD, new graduates with only a bachelor's degree can obtain natural resource positions in government and entry-level earth science positions for consulting companies. This being said, most if not all higher up consulting jobs would require graduate level education. One thing that can increase earning potential and is required for some career paths is a professional geologist license. Although a PG is not required by all states and isn't required of entry level positions, a PG is required for advanced positions because these positions are responsible for work that can affect public health, safety, and the well-being of the public. For example, if you were to get a career with an environmental consulting firm, a PG might be required. Then you could obtain work that focuses on water supply and contamination, landfill development and maintenance, environmental site assessment, and lastly environmental risk management. Or let's say mining and exploration companies interest you. You could go into jobs that focus on finding and defining valuable earth resources. Or assess ways to preserve our resources and identify environmental hazards associated with mining. Oil companies are also a good option for earth science majors because they have an interest in finding access to remote sources of oil and other energy supplies. These are just a few options of what you can do with your earth science major. Earth science is a broad major that provides students with a lot of opportunity to pick the topics that best suits their interests, whether that be agriculture, construction, conservation, or resource exploration. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.